is on Celestial Music by Rick Moody. Um, I guess I guess I should say that there's somewhat of a conflict of interest for me in reviewing it. It's years and years and years ago, when I was a teenager, I was a student at Rick Moody's. So, uh, for what that's worth. That's true, but I think the expectation with that is that I'm going to come out and say, you know, well, I was a student of him, and you know, his his work is all phenomenal. Um, this is the first time in ten years, I think it is, that I've ever even read a good portion of his new book. The last book where I actually sat down and read an entire Rick Moody book was in the '90s. Um, that was a uh, Purple America was, I think, the last time I read a full book by him. Um, Purple America is probably, pro that's probably his best book. But, um, no, I, I, I haven't, I didn't read The Diviners. I didn't read. I would tell you that this book is a completely useless book. Um, that it's, it's the most of the book is, is completely worthless. Uh, I can't tell you that it's all completely worthless because I don't know if you guys ever anybody ever, ever remembers the Pete Townsend was accused of uh, downloading kitty porn. Pete Townsend of the Who. And it wasn't like it wasn't like Gary Glitter. Pete Townsend was never convicted. And there's there's a section on this book. There's one of the essays on this book is an essay of his his doing. Music, music reviews. That's all it is, and uh, and he has an incredible, incredible ability to. Um, well, first of all, he he finds just awful, awful, awful music to be obsessed with. Um, unbelievably, some of the worst music I could even think of. Wilco, you know, bad, bad country rockers trying to appropriate uh, rural, rural country music. Um, you know, people from trust funds trying to trying to become country singers. You got uh, Danielson family. You know, cute cute little indie rock. You know, family Christian act. You got uh, magnetic fields are just annoying, just extremely annoying indie indie music. Just extremely annoying indie rock. And he'll just write about it for pages and pages and pages, like it's the artistic holy grail. You know, and the, the truth about that is, the truth about it and the irony about that, um, simply put, is that indie rock, as it rose to real, I mean, it was around in the 90s, but I think the term alternative was used more frequently. But indie rock... When that started, when like the magnetic field started to be played everywhere, every cafe in, in Williamsburg and all that, that happened because clothing companies started to pour all kinds of money into magazines like The Onion and The Vice and uh, Index or whoever, whoever else it is. And that company is American Apparel. And the reason for putting, you know, Ostensibly, the ulterior motive that American Apparel had in doing that, in putting money into politically leftist publications, was that at the time they were using huge amounts of illegal alien labor in their factory. So that's the socioeconomic reason why that whole indie rock thing with the onion and vice and all that, that's why it happened. Um, It's because Doug Charney was trying to, uh, you know, protect his uh, his financial needs in terms of having these these uh, illegals doing work in his ironies for me personally reading this book was that when I was studying with Rick Moody, um, well, years ago I was listening to it at the time, which Rick Moody only makes a passing mention of in this book. Um, 
the same time that I was writing letters to Rick Mooney, my favorite music uh, was goth. Um, it was goth bands. Uh, you know, there's, I think there were a lot of goth bands at the time. People like Switchblade Symphony that were, you know, people would talk about Phil Spector's Wall of Sound. I think I think a lot of it, there were goth, there were all goth that existed in the 80s, but I think in the 90s, there were all these little tiny goth bands on small labels that were, you know, people talk about Phil Spector's production sense and his wall of sound and all that. But I think if you were really, I think if you were to dig up some tracks like uh, Crescent of the Star by Sunshine Blind or Bad Trash by uh, Switchblade Symphony, some of the music of that time, those small goth bands were making, probably it would make Phil Spector cry in prison. Um, but, uh, no, Rick, Rick, yeah, he, he'll he just go on and on for pages about the Sonic Youth. I mean, it's the same as hanging out with a record store employee in, in Williamsburg, Brooklyn or something. I mean, that's what it is, and it's like hundreds of pages of that. Same interest, but, no, this is, this is terrible. This is, this is not... Don't put this on your summer reading list, you know. That's, uh...